So I, I want to talk about you know, how we built the entire platform that drives ActiveIQ and uh, some choices we made, some interesting choices. Uh, so you, you already know this. So we, we get tons of telemetry data that feeds the platform that I'm going to talk about. And the output of that shows up in these applications. Uh, one of the things we're doing, one of the reasons we redesigned the platform is we're trying to get a lot more data up the stack, right, beyond storage. And, and, and so we have to handle that scale. This is a sense for the numbers. We have a five petabyte hot data lake uh, constantly running out of space. In fact, I have a meeting this afternoon to figure out what to do. Um, 15 petabytes of archival data, right? And this stuff is growing really fast, but you know, our budgets are not doubling every year. So we built a new serverless, there's lots of words here, serverless hybrid multi-cloud architecture uh, that's going to give us <laughs> all the buzzwords. I just forgot to add AI, but yeah. So it's going to give us a 50% reduction in operating costs. <laughs> Makes our finance guy very happy. Um, it's driven by the 16x storage capacity reduction, which I'll explain. Uh, and by using fewer compute nodes, I'll explain all of this. And the thing that makes my boss happy is we can deploy new AI services much faster in this architecture. So our situation for a long time was, you know, Hadoop and its uh, zoo of animals didn't work out very well. Uh, we ran into three challenges, but I'm going to skip all of this in the interest of time. How many of you believe this? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I think it's, it's dead. dead. Um, we had an argument yesterday. We did a podcast on Hadoop. <laughs> okay. So do you, do you agree? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, one, pro one thing we're noticing in a lot of the companies is they've built these massive Hadoop ecosystems, and now they're doing more with AI. And they're actually copying data from one silo to the other because they were designed for different purposes. And, and so we're, we're seeing this. And then, you know, we hired a bunch of data scientists. Uh, those of you that work with data scientists know they all love the cloud, right? They want nothing to do with IT. They don't want to be on premises, right? Money is not their concern. So we had three choices to figure out all this. So we needed to get to scale. We needed to make our data scientists happy. And we needed to reduce costs even though our volumes were growing. And so this is going to be my last, second last slide. Um, we had three choices. Go pick a cloud. Go you know, to Amazon, Azure, Google, you know, someone like that, and be done. And you know, it's actually a pretty good choice. You, uh, they're fantastic in terms of the services they provide for analytics and AI. Uh, very simple to uh, build a uh, data pipeline in any of the clouds. You know, security used to be an issue a few years ago. I think it's a non-issue now. The clouds provide as good security as on-premises, so I think it's a complete non-issue. The problem we had with going down this choice is two problems. Number one, we'd have to pick a cloud. Remember, we have 20 petabytes of data. If I pick a cloud and I put 20 petabytes there, I'm stuck, because you're not moving 20 petabytes out quickly, uh, right? Has anybody mentioned that you sell an object store platform? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could put it there. On premises, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you Just go, next me. one. Yeah. <laughs> But we, but we wanted to get to the cloud, right? Because our data scientist said, we just don't want to deal with IT. We don't want to be on premises. The, the, the second thing is we actually did an experiment. We moved a portion of our data pipelines to the public cloud, and the costs were just unpredictable. In fact, I can tell you it went from uh, about $5,000 a month to $60,000 a month in a span of about five months, right? And, and there just seemed to be no end to it. So the other option was continue to stay on-premises, but I told you Hadoop's dead on-premises, and, and this stuff just is horrible, right? So we wanted a cloud-like experience, but without those costs. And here's the other thing. We wanted to pick, have the ability to switch to any cloud we choose based on various factors. And today, the only way you can do that is by copying your data from one cloud to the other. And at 20 petabytes, that's, that's just not feasible. OK, so this will be my last slide, and then I'll let you go. Sorry, I lied. This one, <laughs> I have to explain this. So the first thing we did is we replaced this, the traditional Hadoop stack with a new stack. Um, so we're getting rid of all the Hadoop stuff, and we're just using serverless functions, which work very well for uh, event processing or sort of real-time processing. Instead of the Hadoop orchestrator, we have Kubernetes now. 
instead of the Hadoop file system, we have NFS. This is the new stack. And we're deploying it. OK, this is the last slide. We're, we're deploying it in, in this manner. Was it? I'm sorry. I'm just thinking, why NFS? Why NFS? I'll explain that to you. OK. Um, OK, let me explain it right now. So with, with, the, with the Hadoop <laughs> file system, right, mm. uh, I have to make uh, three copies yes. of the data, yeah. correct? Like replication, yeah. Right. Where, whereas if I use a clustered ONTAP, I can, I can get the same availability with a single copy of the data. Mm -hmm. I can get the same performance, right? Um, wasn't true 10 years ago, but you know, now the networks and right. things are so fast that it is true, right? I can throw SSDs in there. I can get tremendous performance, or I can mix and match some SSDs and hard disks. I can do all these things. Mm -hmm. But here's the, the killer reason why. Uh, we can turn on all our uh, storage efficiencies. Right, deduplication, compression, compaction. Turns out these things work incredibly well for most telemetry data. Okay. Unless it's images and videos, in which case it won't. But anything that's text or, or performance data works incredibly well. So when you factor in this 3x space reduction and all our storage efficiencies, we get something like 18x savings compared to uh, HDFS. And that's just an enormous cost reduction. Okay, are you guys doing anything right. fancy with NFS, like RDMA, that sort of stuff? No, but we use uh, a, a NetApp technology called Flex Groups, if you're familiar with uh -huh. that, yeah. uh, to essentially create one mega volume that's multiple petabytes. And also because it's load balanced across the cluster, we've observed a 20% performance improvement okay. using that. All right, that's ahead. the main thing we do. The second thing we can, we can do, the other reason for using this NFS is I can now clone that data, and I can spin up a QA cluster in Amazon and point at the clone. So I don't have to copy the data. Mm -hmm. See, in the, in the, in the on-premises world, you'd create a separate QA cluster, a separate pre-production cluster, and copy you know, terabytes or maybe petabytes of data across these clusters. Okay. Now I can just, again, use our technologies and just clone the data so it's a safe copy. And then I can spin up something elastic. The NFS actually can work with the, you know, the high throughput of the Kafka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This, we, we actually have this running. Yep. Okay. This, the, some version of this has been running for the last two years. And today we actually already use Amazon with this, this NFS in a colo. Uh, and a portion of Active IQ that is live is doing this today. We run databases on Amazon with the, with the storage here. Uh, and it's pretty fast. It's actually surprisingly good. Okay, I'm going to end here. But, but this is our proposal, right? Stick thing in a colo. Uh, you could replace NFS with storage grid, and he'll talk about that.